Hello again, YouTube. Big Swole 58 here. And uh, welcome back to my channel. I've been recently asked on a couple of online forums about uh, how do I achieve and maintain the polish finish on my Smith & Wesson revolvers. And uh, I would like to just do a simple kind of show and tell about the products that I use and discuss the, the methods and the techniques uh, that I've used to take some of those old beaten, scratched up guns uh, back to the finish that, I, that I've achieved on them and uh, how I maintain them. I don't really have a gun to demonstrate with today, so really what I'm going to be doing is just talking about the products that I use and the, uh, and the method. Now, a lot of these guns that I buy, uh, they're anywhere from 30 to almost 50 years old. And uh, just serially based on the age, you know, they've been uh, in and out of holsters, they've been shot, they've been handled, they've been in and out of safe. So they naturally they're going to have, you know, 30 to 50 years worth of handling wear on them. Uh, the, the, the major thing that I look for when I buy a firearm is to make sure that I get one that is mechanically sound. Uh, now, I don't want one that's just a complete and total disaster. But if it's a stainless gun and it has just maybe some abnormal wear on it, I know that can be easily reconditioned uh, back to respectability. Now, you can always send your guns off if you want them mirror polished or mirror finished and pay $150 to $250 or more and get them done. But I'm here today to tell you that you can do this uh, simply and within a few hours at home, at your leisure, and have the results that you'll be happy with. Now, when I polish or restore my revolvers or any stainless gun, I'm not looking for a mirror finish. And none of these guns are mirror finished. What they are is what I call just, they just have a bright, clear finish on them that's pretty much devoid of any kind of uh, metal scratches or deep scratches and gouges and uh, it just made smooth and that's that's all I'm looking for and, and that's what I achieve so now I know there's a general consensus on these forums and on YouTube that you can take your stainless gun and for some reason, Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish seems to be the, the, uh, the polish of choice. And there's a belief that you can just start polishing your gun and, and you're going to achieve that, you know, that bright or mirror, or mirror finish that you, you know, hear people talk about. And that's true and false. Now, it's true if the gun that you bought is new and is uh, already devoid of scratches then you can take whatever uh, metal polish you want to use and polish it up to the quality of finish that you want to have. And I know most people just say they just like to shine their guns up and, and that's what they're happy with and that's fine. But if you have a gun that's, that's scratched up and it's got a lot of handling marks on it, you can take metal polish and, and polish it. But what you're going to have is a shiny gun with shiny scratches. And those shiny scratches are going to be even more noticeable once your gun is shined than it was when it was dull. So in order to get rid of that and have that kind of clear, bright finish, you have to polish that gun. Now, there's a difference between polishing and shining. All right, shining metal only creates that metal's ability to reflect light. Polishing smooths that surface of that metal and increases its ability to shine and reflect light. All right, if you just shine something, eventually it will go back to its dull state. If you polish it, it'll never go back to its dull state, though you will from time to time need to polish it again just to remove any future uh, fine scratches that you may have. 
So there's a great big difference between shining something and polishing something. And you can't polish anything without using some sort of abrasive means. And just metal polish alone doesn't always have enough abrasion to achieve that degree of polishing or shining that one may desire to have. Now, when you send your guns and have them uh, professionally done, they're not doing it with metal polish. I can assure you of that. They're doing it with mechanical abrasion, with a, a buffing wheel and several different grades of abrasive uh, polishing compounds that they apply to the wheel and then uh, rub those metal, that those abrasives into the metal gun in order to remove the surface scratches to get them smooth enough where they achieve that desired bright or mirrored finish. And you can do the same thing at home for, you know, a few dollars or tens of dollars as opposed to hundreds of dollars. And if you're a homeowner or a car owner or both, chances are you've got the vast majority of this stuff already at home in your garage or in your shop or in a, in a cabinet inside your home. So nothing I'm showing you today or talking about today is specialized. Everybody could, can do this. You don't have to go out and buy any kind of specialized products. You probably already have this stuff, as I said before. All right, so <clears throat> when I first receive the gun, naturally, the first thing I do is I inspect it to make sure that it's in, in good mechanical shape. And I do a very good detailed cleaning, all right? Now that's important in order to see all of the imperfections that, that may exist. Right. Now, once I'm done with the cleaning, uh, I'll I make sure that the gun is disassembled to the point or the state where I can focus on polishing each component individually. I don't try to polish the gun as one whole device because you're going to miss some places. I'll break the if it's a revolver. I'll break it down to uh, the frame and the cylinder. So I remove the cylinder from the gun, and I always remove. Uh, the rear sight if it's equipped with one and I remove the gun stocks. Now one of the things you definitely want to be mindful about on most on most handguns the, the top portion of this gun is usually is going to be usually bead blasted or, or, or satin finished in order to reduce uh, reflectivity. So once I remove the sight I'll always cover that with painter's tape because I don't want a mirror finish on the top of the gun. I don't want a bright finish on the top of the gun because it's only going to make, it's going to make your sight picture. It's going to pick up and reflect light and it's going to kind of interfere with your ability to, uh, to acquire targets. So once done, <clears throat> I'll examine the gun thoroughly to see uh, to try to determine what level of abrasion that I want to start with to remove the scratches. Now, most of the revolvers that I've gotten is I've never had to start anywhere less than about 1,200 grit, and that was on the worst case. And, and with that paper, I make sure that it's completely wetted before I start the sanding. Now this is important. Never try to sand that gun with dry paper. You're going to ruin it, right? Wet paper, I mean soak it for 15 to 30 minutes to make sure it's thoroughly wet. And then you just want to lightly sand all of the, 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 the worst scratches out of the, out of the gun. You don't need to sand the whole gun, just the, the worst scratches. Once you're, you're finished with the 1200 grit, you go to the 1500 grit. Now with the 1500 grit, you want to do the whole gun. And your purpose for using the 1500 is just to remove the scratches left behind by the 1200 grit. 
you want to always be careful around your markings, uh, your, your logos, all your roll stampings and things like that. You don't want to shallow them out and you won't if you're not too aggressive. You don't, you're not sanding wood. You're just removing these light imperfections. Now, after the 1500 grit, you want to repeat that process with 2000 grit. Again, you're not trying to do anything uh, you know, too aggressively. You want to light sand them out. You want to do this on, on every piece and every part that needs polishing. Now, now my, my choice is I always go to 2500 grit to remove the 2000 grit scratches. Now, once you're at the 2500 grit point, this gun's starting to take a sort of a satin type of look to it. Um, it's going to have a, a, a mild level of reflectivity, almost uh, maybe a little bit less than this bowl. And with most people, that's going to be perfect, right? But make sure you do the whole gun everywhere that you want sand it, all right? Remove it. You should have a nicely uniform, uh, maybe a little bit better than satin finish on that gun at that point. Now, if you want to go to a brighter finish, go to 3000 grit. Now, I don't have any 2500 or 3000 grit sandpaper here today, but you go to 3000 grit. 3000 grit is going to start getting close to the what I would call the, uh, like a bright finish or a mirror finish. Now, you can go as high as 4,005 or 6,000 grit. When you get up to 6,000 grit, you're definitely going to have a mirror finish gun. But again, this whole process may take an hour or an hour and a half. Okay? So we're not talking about days and weeks worth of work. We're just talking just a few couple of hours worth of wet sanding to achieve the clear metal finish that, we're, that I'm talking about. Now, when you're done, now you're ready to start metal polishing. And and this is where this is where the sanding can be appreciated. Now, if you were trying to achieve this by just doing metal polish, you would be polishing for hours. If you're starting with a scratched up gun, you will be polishing for hours. And when you're finished, you're still going to have a shiny gun with a lot of scratches in it. But that sanding removed all of the scratches. So now you've got a metal surface that's virtually smooth. Now all you're doing with the metal polish is removing the micro fine scratches that was left behind by the sandpaper and well, behind by the last grade of sandpaper that you used. In this case, I always stop at 2500 grit. Now you can use your metal polish of choice at this point. You can use never dull. Uh, uh, this, this brass polish works great. The turtle wax polishing compound, it works, it works very well. And I like this if you don't want to achieve a very bright finish because this is primarily for a clear coat and it doesn't do a, a, a real great job on, uh, on metal but it will give you a really nice finish, but it won't be anything close to a mirror finish. It'll give you more like a, a, a bright satin finish, a clear satin finish. And you can use the uh, internet sensation of the mother's uh, mag and aluminum polish. Now, you can use flits, uh, semi-chrome, white diamond, blue coral, it's whatever metal polish you want to use. I mean, it's your choice. Uh, and they're all good, and they all have their limitations. Uh, but I find that the Mothers, uh, for as price-wise, does an excellent job, and it's very price-effective. Now, with the Mothers, at this point, you've got to be mindful of how bright or how polished you really want to make this surface because it has been smooth almost completely smooth and mothers will give you a mirror finish if you polish it long enough once it's been wet sanded okay so 
But now we're talking about minutes worth of polishing as opposed to hours and hours worth of polishing if you didn't do the wet sanding. And that's the part that gets kind of lost in the conversations that people have in, on, in these forums and on YouTube. Uh, if you started out just with metal polish, you would be polishing for hours. And I'm talking, you know, days maybe, two or three attempts at hours each time. But by doing the wet sanding, you'll have the you'll have the finish you want with using these metal polishes in minutes. 30 minutes or so, you're done. And it won't revert back to uh, the state that it was in because you've actually smoothed the surface. It's almost going to be mirror smooth. But all you want to do is just polish it up to the finish that you want. Now, <clears throat> like any polished surface, whether it's a car or a gun, once you've achieved the finish you want, you want to do something to kind of protect that finish. And I don't mean protect it against corrosion and things like that, but you want to protect it against, uh, you know, it dulling or, or its ability to sort of retard surface scratches. And the way to do that is you have to apply like some sort of a top coat, like a, a, a polish or, or not polish, a wax. Now, there's a lot of good waxes out there. And, uh, and I know in the gun community, people swear by gun waxes. Well, I got, a, I got a news flash for you. There's no such thing as a gun wax. All right. Waxes are one of three bases. They're either going to be petroleum-based, silicone-based, water-based, or some other synthetic base. And, and, the car and that's just the carrier. The, the wax is going to be uh, silicone, carnauba, or petroleum generated wax. Now there's beeswax also, and those are usually waxes that don't very they don't do very well on metal. But your petroleum based, silicone based, and carnauba based, and that's all that's in flits. Uh, or, or any other kind of wax. Now your 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 synthetics and your silicone bases are going to be stuff like this uh, Renaissance, but it has a petroleum base, and this stuff is is very expensive. Uh, you can buy it online for about anywhere from twenty to sixty dollars, depending on you know where you're getting it, and it does a really good job. And you hear people talk about, well, you know that stuff's great. They put it on using on items in museums but um, unless your gun's going in a museum you might want to think twice about you know investing sixty dollars in a can of wax flitz is a great wax but it's just a canova based wax just like most car waxes uh, it'll do a great job uh, it's it's easy to use it's durable and it'll retard water and sweat and um, fingerprints and things like that. But so will turtle wax. As long as it's a wax that doesn't have any abrasives in it, you're going to be fine. Now, my wax of choice is old tried and true Johnson Space Wax. Now, this stuff's just dirt cheap. It costs about $6 for this one pound tub and it'll last you a lifetime. And the beauty of this, it has no, no abrasives. It's a petroleum based wax. You can use it on, on the, the metal. You can use it on your gun stocks, your holster, your saddle, uh, furniture, shoes, virtually any non-porous material you can use this Johnson Space Wax on. And it's been around way longer than me and you've been around. And it is a proven, excellent product. Now, it smells like straight gasoline when you're applying it. But once it dries and you buff it off, it has no smell at all. And it works great. Now, what the wax, is, wax does, it just, it just allows, uh, applies a really slick uh, finish 
to the metal and it kind of helps it to uh, deflect surface scratches that you may get from um, just normal use. It's not going to eliminate them, but it does uh, greatly reduce them. Now, another product that you <clears throat> want to buy or keep in your uh, in your gun, gun cleaning kit if you got stainless guns is these uh, these uh, birchwood birchwood cases, lead remover, and polishing cloths. Now they're good for removing the, the black rings off the front of the cylinder faces. And even you can cut a piece and run it down the barrel of your gun. It helps remove leading and uh, carbon buildup from the inside of, from your rifling. And it doesn't it doesn't destroy your barrel or rifle or anything like that. It's not that. It's mostly a, just a, a a soft cloth with with some um, metal polishing material added to it. It does a really good job of maintaining a nicely polished gun. Now this Neva doll is also something that you want to keep around, at least I would, and I do, because for general cleaning, you just break a small piece of this off, and again, you polish those uh, spots where uh, carbon likes to build up and uh, lead deposits, and it does a really good job of just general, generally maintaining a clean and polished uh, outer surface of your, of your firearms. And as I stated before, none of this is rocket science and, and none of it's hard to do. You can do this, you know, in just a, a couple of hours in a day. If you buy an old revolver or if you have an old revolver that's, that's you know, uh, greatly scratched up and you want to do something about it and not have to spend hundreds of dollars trying to pay someone to do it, you, you can do this yourself. And like I stated, if you're a homeowner or you own a car, you've probably got most of this stuff already at home. So just uh, try it, see what you think. And when, if I ever get me another revolver that I want to restore, I'll, I'll do that process and capture it on video and I'll post it. But anyway, that's all I have for now. Uh, I hope this was informative and uh, if it was, please click my like share and subscribe button. Uh, I love talking about the firearms that I have and I like sharing some of the methods and techniques that I use in order to, to achieve and maintain them. But that's all I have for now. I appreciate you watching my video. Please leave comments. I like reading those too and I don't mind criticism. That's how I, I learn, grow, and improve. But for now, this is Big Swole 58 signing off.